Welcome to LabMist.com now lab video series on IPv6 and Cisco router. You can find a complete list of IPv6 video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to walk you through configuration of EIGRP with IPv6. We're going to start out with some basic EIGRP v6 configuration. Then we'll look under the routing process and play around with the administrative distance, the maximum number of equal cost path, and the variance value to support non-equal cost path mode balancing. Then we'll look at how to adjust hello interval and hold time to speed up your convergence, as well as to enable neighbor authentication to enhance your security. For route advertisement, we're going to look at the default route, advertisement, a route leak, and how to change the metrics of your summary route using summary metrics. For route advertisement control and manipulation, we'll look at route filter, redistribution, and route summarization. Then we're going to finish off this video by looking at EIGRP stuff. For our lab topology, we have three routers, R1, R2, and R3, each with four loopback interfaces, loopback 0 all the way to loopback 3, with loopback 1 through 3 simulating three different network with slash 64 subnet. The router R1 and R3 are connected over VLAN 1, 2, 3, while router R1 and R2 are connected over a point-to-point -point serial link. Okay, so now let's go and take a look at our task list. Over here, you can see we have task number 1 all the way through 6, so we have quite a bit to cover in this lab. So start off with task number one with basic configuration. We're going to first enable EIGRP v6 between R1, R2, and R3. I'll show in the diagram and then I'll make sure that we advertise each of their loopback and zero interface. Then we're going to come back and take a look at our second half of the task in a little bit. So first, let me rearrange the tab. So R3, R1, and R2. So start off with R1. Unlike regular EIGRP with IP version 4, where you use a network command, Instead, we will be enabling it under the interface itself. So the command is IPv6 EAGRP and question mark. You still need to choose the AS number. So here we'll choose AS number one, and that was uh, for our loopback interface. Next, we're going to get under the FAST00. Since we're dealing with FAST00 on one side and then serial 000 on the other side for R1. So IPv6 EAGRP1 and then serial 000 colon zero enable EIGRP there as well. Then we need to get under the routing process for EIGRP. So the command for that is IPv6 router EIGRP, same as number one. It's always a good idea to do passive default to make sure we don't accidentally discover neighbors on the interface that do not want to. And then we know passive the interface that we want the neighbor to be formed. For us it's fast 0, 0 and serial 0, 0, 0. And if you do show IP v6 CHRP interface, we should see those two interface show up right here. Okay, next we're going to jump over onto R2. And before we go ahead and enable EHRP, let's enable some debug so we can monitor the EHRP messages. Same thing under loopback 0, we do IP v6 CHRP 1, and then on the serial. 0, 0, 0 on R2 with IPv6 EIGRP1 and then IPv6 router EIGRP1 passive default and then we do no passive on the zero interface. Okay, looks like as soon as we do that, the neighbor came up right here with the EIGRP IPv6 neighbor with the link local address of router1 and these are the network that's being advertised by R2 and we can see that R2 is installing R1 loopback as well as the R1 VLAN123 routes into the routing table as well and to verify we can do show IPv6 router EIGRP and you can see those two routes are show up right here and if we do show IPv6 EIGRP neighbor we can see we are having a neighbor form to the router R1, and this is the router R1 link local address. Just to confirm, do show IPv6 interface, and here it's the link local address ends with 5280. You can see 5280 here. You can see it's up for one minute, the default hold time of 15 seconds. Okay, from R2, if you're trying to ping R1 loopback, which is 2011, sourcing from his own loopback zero, which we should be able to ping that. Okay, now to finish off our configuration with the EIGRP v6, I'm going to hop onto R3 and then get on the loopback interface. 
and then enable EAGRP. And under the FAST00, we enable IPv6 EIGRP1 as well. And then we get under router EIGRP1, passive default, no passive, interface F00. And we do show IPv6 router EIGRP, or IPv6 route EIGRP. You can see R3 is learning R1 loopback, the address or the subnet of the serial link between R1 and R2 uh, right here and then this is the R2 loopback and if you're trying to ping R2 loopback which is 2001.2 from R3 loopback you can see that's pingable as well okay so before we proceed with our lab let's take a look at some of the show command we may have here first one let's see show EHRP question mark you can see protocol you can see right here the default router ID is IPv4, which is always the case. And since we have the loopback zero configured with the highest uh, number of IP address, so let's say 216.01, that's being used by the router to be the router ID. If we do show IPv6 EHRP interface, like we did before, we can see that we have that EHRP enabled for both fast zero zero and serial interface, and each has one peer. We do show IPv6. Let's see what else we can do here. Uh, topology. Just to look under the topology table. Again, very similar command to EIGRP for IPv4. Here we can see all the routes that's being learned, as well as its own routes right here in the EIGRP topology table. And we do show IPv6, EIGRP topology, and let's say we want to look at R2 loopback interface, which is 2001 slash 128. Here we can see some of the metrics, delay, loads, and the composite metrics, and the originator, obviously. This is the router ID for R2. Every to show IPv6 EHRP timer. You can see these are various hello timer, as well as the expiration timer. You can see that by default, the hello process or interval is five seconds. Let's see if you keep up arrow. And for the expiration, it's three times of that, which is 15 seconds. And let's see, the last show command we're going to do is, let's try traffic. And this just basically gives you some statistic of the EIGRP messages that's been exchanged between itself and the peers. So now that we have EIGRP enabled between the three routers, let's take a look at the second half of task number one, which is changing some of the parameters under the routing process. First, we're going to manually set the router ID to 111. And this is on R1, so we do IPv6 router EHRP1. And if you remember what we saw just now, the router ID was using the loopback interface of IPv4. But if you want to manually set, command is EHRP router ID Let's say we need to change it to 1111. Okay, and then we're going to modify the AD for internal and external routes to 95 and 175. Okay, so the command for that, just the question mark, is distance. Yeah, GRP, this is for internal route. Instead of 90, we change to 95. And for external, instead of 170, let's say we want to change it to 175. And if you do show... IPv6 route EIGRP, that should take, there you go, it just uh, needs a little reset when you change that. You can see when it comes back, the AD value has been changed to 295, although we don't really have the external route at this time, but we'll come back and look at that later when we have the, when we do our distribution. Okay, the next one is to allow up to 32 equal cost path, and the command for that is maximum path, which you might already be familiar with. And since we can go up all the way up to 32, we'll do 32. And the last one is for the straightforward to set variance value to 2 to support the non-equal cost path load balancing up to the with the metrics up to two times the lowest metrics. So variance 2. Although you can go all the way up to 128. Okay, now if we do show EIGRP protocol. One more time, you can see the router ID has been updated to the value that we manually configured, which is 1111.
Okay, so that's task number one. So now let's move on to task number two, which is the bandwidth, hello, hold time, and authentication. So first on R1, serial interface, we're gonna allow EIGRP protocol to consume all the way up to 100% of the interface bandwidth. And then we're gonna lower the hello interval to one second and the hold time to five seconds from the five seconds and 15 seconds default respectively. Okay, and then we're going to enable EIGRP authentication between R1 and R2 using MD5 and the key of Cisco. All right, so first on R1, we'll get under the serial interface and to adjust the allowable bandwidth. So we use IPv6 bandwidth percent with EIGRP AS1 and we'll allow the EIGRP to use up to 100%. And obviously this is based on the bandwidth command that specify for the interface and the, the command actually allow you to exceed 100% as well. Okay, but for us, we just say 100%. Next, we will adjust the hello interval and hold time. And we're still under the zero interface and this is the interface facing R2. So the command to change the hello interval is IPv6 hello interval, EIGRP1 and the number of seconds. The task said we want to change that to one second. So hello interval is one. And for the hold time, the command is IPv6 hold time with the IGRP1 and then the number of seconds. So we'll say it five. So if you do show IPv6 EIGRP neighbor or actually EIGRP time on R1, you can see the hello time for the serial interface is always less than one that's because we're telling it to send out hello packets for every one second. Okay, this is towards R2. And for the whole time, we have to hop onto R2 to see how, um, how it took effect. Just by looking at the neighbor, whole time show IPv6, EIGRP neighbor. And you can see the whole time has been communicated from R1 to R2 and for R2 to use. So you can see the whole time will never exceed pretty much five seconds. And since the the frequency of the updates or the interval is one second coming from R1, you can see the timer ne never actually decrements below uh, four seconds. Which means is if there's ever interruption between R1 and R2, R2 will be able to detect the neighbor going down within five seconds instead of the 15 second default whole time. All right, next we're gonna enable authentication between R1 and R2. And just like the IPv4 EIGRP authentication, we first need to specify the keychain. So we're gonna call it EIGRP with key number one and then key string of Cisco in clear here. And we go ahead and enable that on serial interface facing R2 with the IPv6 authentication command. And here you have option for mode and keychain. Let's first do the mode with the IGRP AS1 and mode MD5. And for the keychain, EIGRP1, we call it EIGRP for the name of the keychain. Okay, so you can see when we hop onto R2, we have a little lock message right here that said the neighbor went down because of the authentication failure. And that's because the R1 has authentication enabled, but R2 does not. So now we're going to move over to R2. Just to show, we do show IPv6 neighbor, the IGRP neighbor. You can see R2 and R1 is no longer neighbors. So going through the same thing with the keychain, EIGRP key one and a key string of Cisco. And then under the serial interface, just copy and paste the command that we had configured in R1. Give it a couple seconds and you can see right here the, the adjacency has been reformed between R1 and R2. And if you just show IPv6 EIGRP neighbor, you can see right here the neighbor came back as well as the EIGRP routes. So let's go back at our task number two and make sure we have covered everything. And we did. 